uh, well, good evening. Uh, first of all, I want to thank the Canadian Stuttering Association for allowing me this platform. Uh, and of course, I want to thank all of you uh, for watching and listening. My name is Ronnie Cowley. I am a sports writer who writes primarily about the NHL's Los Angeles Kings, formerly for my own website, makewithkings.net, and now as a managing editor for CaliSportsNews.com. I have been a person who started since early childhood, and I am here to speak about doing what you love as a progressive-minded setterer. So I hope you enjoy it. You know, uh, sitting here, I can't help but think of what I have accomplished and what I want to accomplish in the future. I mean, I can't help but feel good about it, um, uh, to be honest. I mean, there are definitely moments where I wish I could have done things differently. But from an overall standpoint, um, I wouldn't trade the road I took to get here for anything in the world. You know, while I've never actually used uh, uh, the term as a child, I more or less saw my stutter as a curse, for lack of a better term. Uh, this negatively impacted my attitude and my perspective, unfortunately. Even in areas that had nothing uh, to do with my stutter or stuttering in general. Whether it was in school with teachers, friends, uh, the girl I liked who I didn't have the nerve to talk to, for instance. I just let my stutter keep me grounded, if you will. You know, I made excuses. I mean, class, if I knew the answer to a question or I wanted to uh, participate, um, you know, I just wouldn't go through the, uh, the effort or the agony even of uh, putting up my hand. You know, or need to call my friend on on the phone to tell tell him or her something exciting. Um, I would instead just just bypass that and wait till the next day to speak with them in person. Um, you know, it was all about avoiding stressful speaking situations for me, and and it had been for um, for quite a long time. Unfortunately, just take an easy way out. Now, my general attitude, unfortunately, carried over as a teenager and and into my years as a young adult, um, avoiding jobs, social situations, uh, you name it, simply because I was too afraid to stutter uh, if I spoke. You know, partially due to this, I, uh, I was introverted, I was socially awkward, and I, and I kept to myself a lot. In this time, though, uh, I took up solitary activities, uh, 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 such as reading and writing, uh, the latter of which was an interest that I never really wavered. But, like, I dabbled in screenwriting, short stories, and, uh, and, for, and four-time poetry. Uh, 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 although I was never really good at poetry. Uh... Uh, but as I got older, I recall watching hockey and, and out loud expressing my opinions on on what was going on, how I felt about certain players, and even analyzing areas in a player's game like forechecking, uh, uh, face-off percentage, hockey IQ, you name it. So I, I started putting these ideas down on paper. I mean, little by little, more and more each day, I began writing mark articles for my eyes for my eyes only on my computer whether it's like ms word or word perfect or like notepad or whatever um you know uh then as i got older it, it turned into my own blog uh for myspace uh, back when myspace was very popular and um soon after that it was our uh, uh in the notes section of uh, on facebook and you know from there i just kept going like reading multiple books from the greatest american sports writing series reading excuse me articles and books from some of my uh my most notable sports writing inspirations uh jerome holtzman who taught me that there's no cheering in the press box uh to david halberstam who could who could paint a picture paint a picture uh with this word so vividly uh, there's a long-time baseball 
columnist for the Washington Post, Shirley Povich, uh, Mike Lupica, Howard Bryant, uh, uh, and uh, Lynn, excuse me, uh, East Dillman. I mean, I want to make up for my lack of fluency by writing as eloquently as these writers to tell so many stories from so many vantage points uh, to put myself even in the shoes of those stories I'm sharing. You know, honestly, I always get so excited uh, talking about this, uh, but when I did it the first time, my excitement abruptly ended. After all, um, to interview others, to tell so many other stories, I had to face the same fears I had tried so hard to, uh, to avoid for so many years. I mean, as the old adage goes, uh, nothing worth having comes easy. It was going to be hard. It was going to be frustrating, no question, but uh, I was just... Uh, uh, to use a football term, I was tired of watching from the sidelines. I wanted to do something. After all, having a stutter uh, may not have been ideal, I guess, but in fairness, while things could have always been a bit better, they could have always been a heck of a lot worse. So, <laughs> you know, so, uh, you know, so basically, um, um, Who was I to act like a victim? And who was I to f feel sorry for myself? You know, I remember once I was invited onto a podcast. Uh, this was late 2011, early 2012. Now, at the time, uh, I had been doing pregame videos uh, for my own website, the aforementioned Make Way for the Kings. Uh, just some of the Kings and their next opponents, uh, just, uh, just, um, just getting a bit analytical. So, so I thought, you know, you know, uh, you know, yeah, if I could do this, I could easily go on a podcast. Um, yeah, so from there, I, you know, I, I decided not to tell the, uh, uh, the podcast host about my stutter because frankly, I didn't think I'd have any issues speaking. Unfortunately, I did, and naturally, I was, was, um, I was more self-conscious, thinking to myself, like, oh man, this is not going well at all. So the podcast finished, and one of the hosts uh, immediately sent me a quick email right after to say, uh, and I remember verbatim, quote, "Wow, that was bad." I mean, as if I didn't feel bad enough already. Um. You know, uh, you know. I mean, the better part of me could have said, "Okay, no big deal, brush that off." Um, but unfortunately, because of that, uh, and despite multiple requests, I didn't do another podcast for the next, uh, I guess, like five, six years. So uh, at that time, though, while I was writing something new every other day. You know, um, what I was writing was strictly opinion pieces, previews, recaps. And those were all great, and I really enjoyed all of those. But, um, but so many times over the course of maybe three or four years even, uh, I, would say, I would say that if I've interviewed anyone, I'd have to wait for them to be in town because I generally stutter less, a lot less in person. Um on the phone, wow, that, on the other hand, that, um, you know, you know, that was always very difficult for me, and, you know, and unfortunately, it still is, um, you know, because, like, on the phone, for me, uh, at least, it's, it's hard to say something, uh, you know, fairly simple, like, uh, like, how are you, or thank you, or yes or no, um, uh, now, I had friends, you know, who did help me with some phone interviews, which I did appreciate, and to them, I say thank you very much. But as someone who has always valued his independence, uh, I wanted to find my own way to conduct it, phone interviews. So, uh, uh, so having that passion and desire to want it, to conduct phone interviews more and more, I remember the scene from the movie The King's Speech where 
Colin Firth uh, recites a reading while listening to classical uh, music over headphones. I mean, in hindsight, I don't know why it took me so long to come up with this. After all, I saw the movie, ah, uh, God, like five times in the theaters, uh, 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 and this was back in 2010, so, um, uh, but at the same time, better late than never. You know, I was going through a <clears throat> very difficult time, both personally and professionally, when I began this. You know, and to be frank, my confidence was at one of its lowest points. I used an app on my computer to pre-record my questions, and and what I thought would be easy with mu music at first was, well, anything but. Um, you know, whether it, was, whether it was trying to find something new or being... Um, being my head too much, uh, whatever the reason, I had consider considerable difficulty getting the words out at first, but I would keep trying. Uh, you know, as hard and as frustrating as that was, for hours, for the rest of the day, however long it took. Uh, you know, and then the risk of sounding dramatic. Uh, you know, it. You know, at first it 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 felt like crawling through wet cement almost uh, to recite my questions fluently. But little by little, I got better, and in turn, more fluent and more confident. But uh, but it was also this time that the Los Angeles Kings, uh, the team I had written um, so much about for years, were about to embark on their 50th anniversary season. So, uh, so what better way to celebrate that than to interview uh, 50 former Kings? And now I did, I did have a friend help me with some of the interviews, but I did a lot of them uh, myself. Uh, speaking with a lot of players I uh, grew up watching, I mean some with long careers with the Kings uh, and others. Um, you know, you know whose tenures with the, with the franchise may not have been as long, uh, but whose stories resonate with me uh, nonetheless. Whether it be professionally or personally. I mean, and it was also around this time when I started reaching out to the Kings uh, minor league affiliates and even uh, some major junior teams in Canada and the United States and even Europe um, about Kings future talents. I mean, I was thinking of more perspectives of what type of stories I want to tell. And, uh, and the idea that came to me on of all days, like a lazy weekend day, where I was, I was actually binge watching Curb Enthusiasm, um, and it's funny there was always something. About, even though it wasn't sports related, um, uh, there was always something about the show that always, you know, it, uh, 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 just inspired me to get ideas, like and start writing. Um, and and for whatever reason something clicked and and I just started uh, garnering ideas and reaching out to so many different teams as a result. Now, now like I did with my fifty former Kings interviews, um, I had an email template written out, introducing myself, why I'm writing, and a forewarning about my stutter and my pre-recording question method. Um, so, I mean, those who wrote back uh, were more than understanding of my situation, and, and we'd set up a time. Uh, so, so, like, I mean, as good as, as good and as beneficial as this was, though, uh, I remember always needing a few days' notice um, uh, between reaching out the interview and the actual interview. Um, as I need a lot of time and preparation for each interview. But with anything that involves practice, uh, this only got better. Um, you know, and it got to a point where it's um, so much better today that if I'm arranging an interview with someone, I'll just give myself uh, maybe, maybe an hour. I mean, in some cases, a half an hour. I'll write out my questions, generally four or five, uh, you know, and recite them fluently on the first try. Um, you know, and, and if it happens where, um, where I speak too fast or something, I'll just 
recite again, but it doesn't take more than two, three tries. Uh, but yeah, I'll go ahead and call them, have the interview wrapped up just like that. So, so between the preparation and the interview time, uh, I mean, you know, uh, um, I mean, everything would be done in maybe at most an hour and a half. So, uh, uh, um, I mean, which is a vast improvement from a few years ago uh, when it took, you know, uh, a few days. So, like, but you know what? Uh, but like anything, though, this this was not an overnight sensation, uh, not even close. Uh, like anything, this came with practice. Um, I, I mean, I even gathered the courage to uh, take part in a few episodes of a podcast uh, with the interview of my friend and colleague and podcast co-host uh, Jeff. Uh, during those podcast episodes, he was even texting me along the way, uh, just some words of encouragement saying, you're doing great, just just take your time, uh, there's no hurry. You know, uh, and that may not have been a big deal to him, but but, but for me, that, that helped exponentially. Uh, uh, you, you know, um, you know, the pep talk, while it may not have been necessary, uh, Jeff, just being the good guy that he is, you know, just, just took upon himself to give me, uh, you know, some words of encouragement, and, and, uh, um, uh, no, and that honestly made all the difference in the world for me. So, you know, uh, so did Jeff. I mean, I've I've thanked him before, but it bears repeating. Thank you, Jeff. Now, with that said, podcasts I I do still admit are an area I'm not still fully comfortable with yet. But I mean, I know I'll get there, whether it's being a guest or starting my own podcast. Uh, 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 starting my own podcast is a goal of mine, by the way. But uh, uh, it, but more success just comes with more practice. It's just just a matter of starting, uh, just just finding your comfort zone or my comfort zone, and just running with it. Um, um, you know, another goal of mine. I I, I like I, I like to. Uh, in fact, I love to be able to write and publish my own book. Um, I mean, these goals and a few others, uh, such as writing for a major sports publication or a team, uh, are good uh, to have in mind. Uh, actually, nay, they're they are essential to have in mind because having these goals for myself just keeps me motivated to keep doing what I love doing. Uh, but it's, but with all that said, it's just not my sports writing career that keeps my love confidence level as high as it can be you know um i've had positions where i worked for or with some people who thought less of me because i stuttered the, those who i thought uh in my mind at least uh thought it didn't deserve the time or energy uh, that a more fluent speaker uh received i mean i mean it goes without saying these experiences were tough and they were frustrating and demoralizing. There's, uh, there's no doubt about it. But for a long time, um, I said that these people made me feel small or worthless. I mean, in fairness and in actuality, um, these people did not make me feel that way. The only person that uh, that made me feel that way, uh, well, that was myself, uh, because. You know, because in all fairness, uh, I, I could have easily just um, uh, just brushed off the thoughts or their potential thoughts. I'm not even sure a lot of people did think that way. It was just my own insecurities. But unfortunately, I let that hey, bother me, and I let it bother me to the degree where, where um, um, you know, as I said earlier, you know, it just it affected my overall attitude and perspective on on so many facets of life. I mean, um, you know, I mean, so I could have responded to the criticism for ignorance by being the best I could be, but instead, uh, and unfortunately, I was despondent, I was complacent, uh, and I was even lazy. 
Um, I mean, I know better now. I know a lot better now. But as I said earlier, uh, it is better like than never. A part of me, though, still wonders what could have been had I just come to my senses a bit earlier. Still, those unpleasant experiences in the workplace pale in comparison uh, to the promising experiences uh, um, <clears throat> um, I had experienced both in the workplace and, and definitely as a sports writer. <clears throat> you know, we all have a voice. And we all have a right to uh, let our voice be heard, to express ourselves. Uh, sports writing is mostly where I have a voice. But it has opened the door to choose my voice in different aspects. There was a time I wouldn't have the courage to speak with you now. Uh, whether it's virtually or in front of an audience. But, uh, 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 but you know what? Um... Obviously, sitting here this evening, that's, you know, the reality is a much different story. So, to those who didn't give me the opportunity to speak because you didn't want me to finish, uh, you didn't want to wait for me to finish, finish sentence, well, uh, well, you know what, uh, 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 I'm sorry I had to be that way and that is unfortunate but uh, for those who who did let me finish who were patient and understanding uh, you know, I sincerely thank you for that <clears throat> you know uh, one company I had an interview with years ago uh, I went into the interview and the manager said that uh, normally my position would uh, require phone work. Um, uh, but he accommodated, uh, he knew about my difficulty with the phone and, and, um, he, he accommodated to that. Uh, just, uh, just telling me, you know, there are ways around it and don't worry about using the phone. And, and he said that very early on in the interview. And I remember just thinking to myself quickly, um, um, you know, barring anything unforeseen, he can say whatever he can, he can say whatever else he wants uh, to me about this job. Or, um, uh, uh, but like my attitude was that, like, you know what? If you know, if if God, you can offer me the job, and I'll and I'll happily take it. Uh, uh, mainly because of that. Uh, I mean, he was a really good guy. It was a good job, but uh, but just his accommodation of that, uh, of my difficulty uh, on the phone was uh, it really was a turning point. And and to be honest, it is a big reason why I still keep in touch with uh, uh, with him today. Now, my current position as a uh, uh, communications officer, a CSR, is another great example. Um, um, where I come and get regular people like uh, via email and online. And now, in my interview for this position, I spoke with a team of seven or eight people. Uh, um, now, given my situation with my Sutter, but like, um, uh, uh, but honestly, Sutter or not, this is something a lot of people can relate to. Um, uh, you, you know, knowing that I'd be, I mean, just interview one-on-one -on -one is stressful enough, but, uh, but to go in and have to speak to seven or eight people, you know, uh, that just adds to that. So anyway, um, um, anyway, anyway, I went in my interview, I, I did the best I could, but, but at first I was having a really considerably difficult, uh, uh time speaking. I mean, I knew... I mean, I more or less knew what I wanted, who wanted to say, but just getting it out. So, uh, um, so my manager, or who would go on to be my manager, uh, could see that I was having difficulty, and, and, um, you know, and I remember job interviews, they, you know, you know, um, you know, if I stuttered, some would look at me, 
uh, strange. Uh, others would brutally interrupt. Um, uh, but my manager, in this case, uh, she... Um, uh, um, uh, she just asked me if I had my laptop on me, which I did, uh, because in the room with the interview, um, um, there's a big projector screen. So, so what she did, she suggested that if I was comfortable, uh, they, they would start a Google Doc where members of the team would, would type questions and I, and I would type out my answers, uh, as it's projected on the big screen. So uh, she sent me a Google Lock invite, gave me a few minutes to, to, to get my laptop and all that set up. And um, uh, yes, uh, no, and, and I can honestly say, I think, uh, I think like 95% of, of the questions at least, uh, uh, I knew exactly what I wanted to say. So I did it and, and, and the interview went so smoothly and, uh, you know, you know, and my manager, she, she could have easily been like, um, uh, like past interviewers who just looked at me strangely or just interrupted me, uh, you know, and thought I couldn't do the job, but she wasn't like that at all. She, she could not have been more accommodating, uh, uh, more welcoming. So, yeah, um, um. And on top of that, uh, I knew she had hectic schedules. So, so if anything, I was, uh, I think a part of me was trying to kind of hurry up my answers so she'd have time. But no, it was nothing like that at all. Uh, uh, just the utmost patience for me and my situation. So, I mean, needless to say, the interview went smoothly. Uh, um, uh, I mean, they got back to me a few weeks later, tell me I got the job. But, uh, but immediately after the interview, I mean, it was something I'll never forget. And I mean, it was something where as soon as I did leave, I, I called my wife, who was my girlfriend at the time, uh, just telling her how, how amazing I felt and how even in the event where I didn't get the job, uh, I would be forever indebted to my manager for doing that for me. Uh, uh, and again, back to, you know, back to Jeff and his words of encouragement, uh, uh, during those podcast episode, uh, he, you know, those gestures may not have meant, meant much or may not be a big deal to them, but, uh, 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 you know, but those, those gestures were a big deal to me and they made a huge difference. So, um, uh, but yeah, so like, uh, and that was fantastic. Uh, you, you know, uh, you know, uh, and to her, like, like even years down the road, I'll always remember that. But like, um, uh, but even more, in 2018, um, I was chosen to give my first, or 2019, sorry, I was uh, chosen to give my first ever speech, and uh, and my same manager, um, is an accomplished public speaker herself, uh, uh, as she, as she found out, it was really excited for me and even offered to help me with my speech and uh uh, uh uh you know again she took time out of her busy day to to help me and the feedback she gave me was then was very beneficial and and the, and the feedback she still gives me today for speeches is is just as beneficial and and uh and and i absolutely love that like uh you know I mean, I embrace it because whether it's as a speaker, as a sports writer, as my role as communications officer, you know, it's all about improvement. I just love getting, uh, you know, a little better each and every day. I mean, my other boss at my current job, uh, he was just as supportive of my goals as a speaker. Uh, as she, uh, days, days before my first uh, uh, speech, my... Uh, my 2019 speech for the Canadian Center Association. Um, uh, he, he even booked he, he book, booked a big room where uh, just so I can make a, a good practice run for my first ever speech. Uh, no, no. Uh, uh, and, and from what I remember, he invited a lot of our colleagues to it. I think about maybe ten or so. But uh, I mean, it was so great. Rather, 
rarely had I ever felt that good, uh, and rarely had I ever felt that infallible even. So, I mean, that was fantastic, and I love that. Um, you know, uh, you know, and this boss I had, you know, uh, and we've had multiple conversations about this. Uh, he even told me just how much he has learned from me, like being a person who stutters, uh, and what lessons he has taken, uh, because he told me before me, he's never, uh, uh, uh he's never worked with a person who, who stutters. So, so from me, he's really learned a lot, uh, and how he's used that as a leader, both, um, without a workplace and also in his you know in his venture uh as a life coach but you know what i mean no matter how many unpleasant uh, experiences i've had as a person stutters and there have been a lot um and you know there'll probably be some more along the way but it is these experiences the understanding and accommodations from employers, colleagues, and those I interview who respect me, not only as a person who stutters, but as someone who is committed to break the walls of ignorance down, uh, to walk through proverbially hell in a gasoline suit to achieve my goals. It, it is these experiences that have helped see my stutter as an advantage, as a blessing, as uh, any positive word you want to call it, but anything but a curse. You know, like in my sports writing career, what started out as one phone interview has turned into over 300. I have the honor of speaking to some pivotal figures in hockey, from former Kings owner Bruce McNall to Willie O'Ree, who in 1958 broke the NHL's color barrier. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, become the league's uh, first ever black player. Scott Barney, head coach of the resilient, humble Broncos. Uh, longtime NHL commissioner Gary Bettman. And some of the most prominent women in hockey. From Cammie Granada, who, uh, among her vast list of accomplishments, uh, includes being hired as the NHL's first female scout uh, by the expansion Seattle Kraken. And Blake Bolden. Whom the, who the Los Angeles Kings recently hired as the NHL's first black female scout. I mean, I have accomplished all of this, and it all started with a fiery determination to show everyone, and even myself, uh, that while I may have difficulty speaking fluently at times, I will never have any difficulty in finding alternative methods to get my message across, whether it's through, in the risk of sounding arrogant, my eloquent writing, my vivid storytelling, uh, <laughs> and my well thought out questions. So, so whatever position you are in as a person who stutters, break through. For a long time, I never thought I could. I never wanted to even believe that I could. But once I started believing it, I did it. And I continue to do so. So take it from me. Be the absolute best uh, that you can be. You may not be where, where, you, where you want to be right now. Um, you may feel that you're too young or too old, too inexperienced, um, too shy, whatever. But, it, but you know what? That will never be the case. You are exponentially better uh, than you may think you are. And believe me, I've been there. So, so whether it's as a journalist, as a teacher, as a lawyer, anything at all, be your best and be sure to leave an impact. You know, uh, you know, while I said I'm not much of a poet myself, uh, uh, one of my, one of my favorite poets was, uh, the late great Maya Angelou. And, uh, she said it best when she said, I've learned that people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did. But people will never forget how you made them feel. So please, take that to heart and don't ever forget that. Take full responsibility for your life. Accept where you are 
and the responsibility that you're going to take your life where you want to go. No longer is my stutter a curse, nor will it ever be again. I have learned to brace my stutter. I have learned to brace being a person who stutters. My stutter may not define me, but I am thankful uh, and blessed that it is a part of me. It was the unpleasant experiences I, I went through as a person who stutters, whether it was being teased or mocked to be ignored or rejected. That has shaped me as the person that I am today. Don't look up at me. Don't look down at me. But please, instead, look, look at me at eye level. Look at me as just another flawed human being who doesn't let anything stand in his way. Look at me and, using sports terminology, think of some of the greatest championship winning teams. The 2004 Boston Red Sox, the 2014 Los Angeles Kings, and most recently, the 2020 Los Angeles Dodgers. Look at me and think of whoever and whatever you like. Heck, if you want to look at me and think of something or someone unpleasant, by all means. But you know what? I will keep persevering regardless. You know, the last chapter of your life has not been written yet. And it doesn't matter what happened to yesterday. What matters is what you're going to do about it. I have been ignored, overshadowed, treated like dirt. But I have pushed through. Some instances were harder than others, but I pushed through nonetheless. And I will continue to do so, to garner the respect I deserve. I have many chapters written, but I have many more left to be written. This is just my beginning, and I have never been more motivated, more excited to just keep getting better. I have changed a lot, but a lot has changed me. I've adopted a much different attitude and perspective. And although I am still introverted, and yes, and yes, I am still socially awkward, but hey, that's okay. You know, I don't have all the answers. I have failed as much as I've succeeded, but I love my life, I love my wife, and I wish you my kind of success. So, go out there and take it. Thank you once again to the Canadian Stutter Association, and thank you all once again for watching and listening. Have a great evening, and all the best to you. Thank you.